Welcome to my kit review of Thunder Models British Scammo Pioneer. Uh, this is the R100 variant, which is the heavy artillery tractor. There's some nice box art here with the uh, the vehicle itself ploughing through the mud. It's very nice. This is a 135th scale. And around the box, just a bit of blurb about the vehicle itself. And just some uh, information on the part number and the screws. Uh, we also get PE detail sheet, the scale ropes. On the reverse of the box, we've got some uh, additional kits from Thunder Models. Here's another variant, which is the recovery tractor version. The third variant is the uh, tank transporter. Let's have a look in the box. So it's filled to the brim with uh, a light grey plastic. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take these all out the, the wrappers and I'll, I'll come back in a sec. Okay, here's the first sprue. This uh, has the, the roof of the cab and the, the rear cargo area. You can see there's some rivet detail along the, the seams here. Across the front and down the sides. We also have the, the rear area, the cargo bed. Uh, there's a lot of wood on this model and we've got wood grain showing as well. I don't know if it'd be over scale at 135th, but it does look nice. And I think if it all painted up, it will have a good effect. I think this area, I think it's a rear step from the cab into the, the rear cargo or crew seats. But this one's very translucent. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Similar wood effect in the panels here. We've got a number of ejection pin marks. Uh, this is the underside, so it shouldn't be a problem. Here's this rear. Again. It's got detail on both sides. A few small bits and pieces in here as well. And I think it's a handbrake mechanism. The next spray there's appears to be a double up here. So we just look at the one. Is one of the other bulkheads again. This is the floor to the cargo. Again, got the grain, the wood grain effect. Some of the wheels. A nice uh, bolt detail on the, the hubs. Very small bits here. I think this is the final drive area where be the two wheels. Possibly seat pads. Very nice. There's, again, there's, there's no flash in any of these parts and some of these thin details might be a bit difficult to, to clean up properly, but it's very nice. Uh, the sprue's got some suspension and engine details again. Just noticed how translucent some of this is. This must be very thin. But uh, the front wheel arches. 
to show you guys it's a nice point of detail again. Similar control levers, these panels. Again, we bought detail. This must be the bonnet. And here's a radiator. So this kit comes with the correct uh, seven bars in the radiator. I think the original release only had six, and you could get uh, you could send away to Thunder Models, and they'd supply the correct part. But this appears to come with it. So that looks like the the engine block here, because you get a full engine in this one. Uh, some of the leaf springs. You can see how, how thin this is. Okay, so it's two halves for the leaf springs inside of the wheel arches. Next spur. This is a fuel tank, I believe. Here's the engine cylinders. And I think this is the side panels for the engine bay and the winch pulley. There's no flash in any of these parts. So here we have the, the firewall between the engine bay and the cab, detailed on both sides again. A couple of ejection pin marks, but these will be covered with the instrument panel, so that's no problem. I think that's a sump for the engine. Yep. The exhausts. small control levers. Again, very fine detail on these. And, and zero flash and, and no pin marks of ejection pin marks so far that would affect the uh the belt at all. This is the uh the cob floor again with wood grain. Leaf springs. Some more finer details. I think these are the side of the cab. Pins there. Again, these little details are just fantastic. Very fine grab handles. So this one's got these chassis rails. with a lot of detail and again the, the wood grain effect and all these side panels again it's some more really fine details here detailed in both sides in and out with the wood grain and no ejection pin marks at all Smaller spring with some details here. I believe that's the engine area. 
boobies for the winch. And now uh, controls, I believe. Oh, oh no, it's sprue heads. Looks to be some kind of deal, you know. Cleaning this up might be problematic. Also, the, the sprue gates are very small. Movie <coughs> guy draws. Looks like a gear. Okay, this brewery's got all the engine detail by the looks of it. Again, a uh, cylinder, cylinder band. I guess it's the diesel injection pump. Bell hole thing. The steering wheel was very fine. And again, I oh, hear some like brake levers or control levers. Small details. <coughs> On the back side, nothing much. Uh, so, the two of these spurs are the same, these are all the wheels. The wheels are built up by several slices. Again, very good detail in the nuts and bolts. Very sharp. So here's some of the bands that build up on the wheels. So the wheels are made up in a sandwich fashion. This is the front wheels, which have a more road going tread rather than the heavy off-road tread. I don't know how accurate that is. I've seen restored versions with uh, a road going tread rather than the, the off-road tread all around. So again, there will be resin wheels available for this. It's actually got the Goodyear and tire size on the side of it. These ones, just got the tire size. Very fine parts here as well. Some more details. I think this is the the bracket for the wheel latch. Seat back parts. And the seat, the seat bottoms. That's all the screws for the clear parts. I won't take them out of the bag, they're just flat. Flat windows and headlight lenses. The kit comes with uh, a full white sheet. This appears to be copper rather than the usual uh, brass. This makes this large area is like a cargo storage area under the driver's step to get in. Engine fan. We'll open up. We'll get some chain as well. I think that is wrapped around the front. Some thread for the uh, the winch, the good spaces for the wheels, and 
so the deco, it's not, again, because it's the type of vehicle, there's not going to be a great deal of decals for it. some regiment markings uh, Bodicea a lot of vehicles seem to be called Bodicea for some reason and then we've got some uh, registration marks should have some more of these as well they're very clear and white It looks brass under the camera, but it's actually more copper. I've got an instrument panel here. A few of the little bits and pieces, window wipers. Okay. I'll have a We'll have a look at the instructions in the colour call-ups now. Okay, here's the colour call-ups. We get four uh, versions. Uh, this first one, oh, there's no detail. This one here is first British Army. 54th Heavy Artillery Regiment with 7.2 inch howitzers, Operation Torch 1942. So this one looks with the, the numbers and the plates to be a real vehicle. I think this is just a made up, a made up version. Uh, R100 captured in German service summer 1943. Just in the usual German grey. And then here's a, an unknown unit in France, 1944. I quite like the colour of this one actually. I've came across somewhere where these colours aren't quite right. I think this one here uh, is supposed to be like a almost like a, a blue black color but i'm not sure i'll have to have a research because this is likely the one i'll go for so uh, front just a legend for the different activities there's no actual color call out because it seems to be within collaboration with uh, ammo ammo by meg so that's the only colours you get. But if you wanted to change, you can, you can have a look and see the equivalents from other manufacturers. Uh, a bit of history about the vehicle. First steps into the, the engine itself. <clears throat> I believe the colour for the engine, which is over here, is a it's like a bluey light grey kind of colour. Got some details here. Injection pump. Here's bits and pieces. The exhaust manifold. And here's the radiator expressing the seven uh, segments for the front. Radiator assembly. The bell housing. And then the, the painting guide. The next step is building up the front suspension swing arm, leaf spring assembly, and the frame or chassis. It's got no glue here, so I'm guessing it will pivot so the, the actual assembly goes this way rather than individual wheels going up to follow the terrain. It's 
step three, still on the chassis area, so that's the leaf spring for the, the front tool hook. Must be like a shock crank, so we pull in. Uh, gearbox assembly for step four. And then step five, the pulleys and guide rollers for the, the winch cable. Into step six, we've got the installation of the engine and the gearbox onto the bell housing. And a few details. And then the rear of the chassis and in, in installing the, the winch and the frame rails. Here's the winch itself. Be the drive for the winch. Continuing on with the, the rear springs from here, reservoirs. There's two of these. This is for the brake system. Installation of the pulley. So there's quite a lot of sub assemblies here. I got some drive shafts going in. The U bolts and plates to hold the uh, leaf springs in position. They're all fully detailed as well. This is the rear uh, wheel assembly carriers, if you like. So here's your two wheel hubs. My understanding is you have a center, a central drive shaft into here. And then this is chain driven inside this case to drive the two wheels. Quite differential. Yeah, so you don't glue this pivot point through, which I, I essentially would be the drive shaft from the diff. And then this will allow. Uh, that assembly to rock up and down to follow the terrain again. Some more drive shafts. This appears to be uh, straight from the, the service manual from back in the day, showing the additional details you can put in with uh, airlines for the brakes. So that, that's a nice touch to get that. Got the cab assembly next. So again, this has got a nice wood effect in the floor. I'm not sure if that would be painted or left wood. And then we've got the seat pads and seat frames going in. And the gears, gear stick. Uh, I think that's an ammo box. Front bulkhead going on, fireball. It looks like you actually have to cut these out. I didn't see anything on the deco, so for the gauges, for the instrument panel, you, you might have to cut these out. I'm not sure how this works. That's a, that's a full wedge part. Maybe this sits in front of that. I'll have to look. And then Closing up the, the driver's cab with the two side panels. I believe these windows templates is for you to use to cut out your own masks to cover the windows for painting. So these should be the correct size. Now installing the car body onto the frame. This is the handbrake, I believe, which gets fed up through underneath. We've got the steering column and the linkages to the steering box. Additional uh, engine hosing, air filter, and bonnet, and then steering wheel and some gear levers. Or some kind of lever on there. 
Here's some uh, photo wedge here uh, for the, the windows. So again, you can position the windows uh, open in an angle using this photo wedge. Insulation. This is the the rear uh, winch assembly that actually lives in the, the on the roof inside roof and it slides out and then you can use the winch to lift the ammunition into the back of the bed. I'm showing you the, the roof rails here that it attaches to. I believe for the rear panel here you have to cut a, a slot for the for the support beam to slide in and out. Oh, there we go. So it shows you in the extended position and the chain that was supplied would wrap around this and hang down. This would be what you'd use to winch up the, the ammunition, seven and a half inch uh, shells, I believe. And then you've got a little stop to keep it in place. So this is the interior okay so you can load up the back and you can actually sit here as well also it looks like this area here has the additional crew member seats continuing on this rear bed and on these frames okay so you can come in through the driver's side through the, the opening here and into the crew cab and then into the I guess the ammunition bed itself. The roof going on. Just giving you the options for the lifting through the assembly. So here's the cut you have to make yourself. I think I'll have it extended with the chain hanging down. I have seen uh, aftermarket resin uh, cradles with uh, seven and a half inch shells in them, so it would be good for a diorama. Finishing off some of the remaining panels here, oh, that was, that's a door actually. Yep, yeah, there'll be a door into the crew cab as well, the access ladder. Front wings in the brackets. So this is the tyres of wheels I was talking about, all are made up of five five components, fuel tank going on, and then we're into the small details, wing mirrors, full wedge window wipers, and here's the, the chain for the, for the pulley. Apparently you have a couple of different options depending on the rotation of the wheel, uh, you can pick two different patterns. I don't believe either of these are correct. So. I think they had a more aggressive tractor like part on it. Uh, rear mud flaps, which is photo wedge, access ladders, a couple of brackets. This is the big PE section here, which forms a basket for storage underneath the driver's side of the cab. And that is it. So on the whole, it's again another very nice kit. There's zero flash in any components. There was a few injection pin marks here and there, but really none of it would be uh, visible or in the way. So yeah, that's another great model. I think we'll build up into a really nice one. I think with some weathering for, like in this example, with mud and splashes, I think you can get a really good uh, diorama going with this. Thank you for watching.